There is no right way to play golf. Golf is such a personal sport. As long as you find a way to play golf for you, you are gonna play the best golf that you can play. So today we're gonna dive in a little bit more onto that topic. And I hope you guys stay tuned. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss an episode of Golf with Jen. So one of the reasons why I want people to think more about this topic, about playing golf for yourself and understanding that there is no right or wrong, is that I don't feel like a lot of people are playing golf to their are able to enjoy golf as much as they can and are able to embrace the fact that everybody plays golf differently. Everybody tries to do things a certain way. They try to play golf the way that they see the pros on TV do. They try to play golf the way they want to emulate somebody rather than be themselves. So let's talk about it here on this par 3 hole 11 out at Twin Creeks. Okay, so I just shot the pin. It's 139 yards. It's playing downhill. So it's going to be a little bit of uh, probably about a 130, 132 yards carry, I would say. And that itself depends a lot on you. If you're somebody who carries the ball higher, somebody who carries the ball lower, that is going to make a difference. So do not forget that trajectory of your ball and how you usually hit the ball is going to make a difference. But let's look at other factors. So number one, let's look at the tee box. Where are you going to tee off on this tee box depends greatly upon your shot shape and where you feel most comfortable with. First of all, most people who hit draw shots would not want to tee off here because this opens it up towards the left side. So if you hit a draw shot, you're going to miss it more left as opposed to if you are teeing off here. Where you can aim more towards the right side and let it draw back and you will still be closer to the pin compared to if you were to tee off on the right side. Another factor is if you look at this here, this tee box is over. It's sloping this way. And over here, it's sloping this way. So it really depends also on your ability and what you feel. Like I just said just now, people who hit a draw shot might not want to tee off on the right side. However, if you feel like your draw can be compensated by a downhill lie because a downhill lie usually makes the ball go a little bit more right, then it might be more advisable for you to hit down the right side because it's going to straighten out your shot a little bit more. So once you've decided based on facts, as I would call it, you know, like facts such as when you're on a downhill eye, the ball's gonna go more right, you have to decide based on feel. So for you, what do you think is going to be the best direction, angle for you to hit this green? So after you've decided which side of the tee box you want to tee off, you need to choose your aim. So how are you gonna choose your aim? Out here you can see the bunkers are only down the left side. There is nothing on the right side of this green. However, the pin is on the right side of the green. Why I mentioned that the pin is on the right side of the green is because if you miss it on the right side, you might have a dip difficult chip because you might be short sighting yourself. So your aim is also going to depend on your ability. Are you someone who trusts in your chipping or would you rather just hit it on the green? If you would rather hit it on the green, there is actually space down the left side as long as you hit it long enough. So again, the bunkers are only on the front of the left side and behind the pin on the right side. There is actually a space on the left side if you were to hit it down the left side. So you really need to decide what is best for you. For me, it's playing into the wind right now. I'm probably going to carry about 135. So I'm hitting an 8 iron and it's going to be a full 8 iron but I'm not teeing up. So one of the reasons why I mentioned target and aiming on a certain hole is because sometimes I feel like I hear this a lot amongst amateurs, especially, you know, they kind of go to a hole and they're like, especially if it's a course that they're not used to playing and they're playing with a member, the member would say something like, oh, hit it down the right side. But what does hitting it down the right side mean for you? The right side could actually be the spot that you want to avoid. So don't forget that yes, it's important to listen to what a member has to say because sometimes they provide insights that you wouldn't know, especially on a brand new golf course. But always just take it with a grain of salt and know that golf is not the same for everybody. So what they do might not be what you want to do. So I ended up hitting it too far, so I'm over the pin. 
as I said just now, if you missed it on the right, there's a chance you're going to have to chip, which is what happened. I actually hit it straight the pin, but because I hit it over, it's still in the rough. So if you are someone that do not want to chip, this is probably where you actually want to avoid because you have the least landing area as opposed to if you had missed it left. Even if you might be chipping, you still have a lot of space to land it and you, therefore you have an easier chip. So for me, chipping is not really something that I'm afraid of. There are going to be difficult chips on the golf course, but generally I know that my chipping is good enough that I can get it up and down. So for me, I would much rather hit it straight at the pin and if I were to miss it, I know that I can get it up and down, but if I were to hit it really good, I know that it would be close to the pin. So other than strategy on a golf course being different for every single individual, I also want you to think about what you are thinking. I want you to know what you are thinking as a golfer and what works best for you. So what do I mean by that? So this par 5 is playing 565 yards. I know that I cannot get it on in 2, so my aim here is to hit the fairway. So what I do is I choose a good target. Once I have my target, I know exactly the kind of shot that I want to hit. And this is all that I'm thinking about before I hit. Right now, I want you to know what are you thinking about at that point? Like I said, golf is different for everyone, so I cannot give you an answer for what you should be thinking about. For me, it might be thinking about nothing, it might be thinking about short shape, it might be thinking about my target, but what works for you? I think a lot of people don't really know, especially when they haven't decided what they're going to do. Above the ball is when they're thinking, ooh, I don't really want to hit this left because it's going to go in the trees. Or ooh, I don't really want to go to the right side because there's a water hazard there. So that is actually the most important point before your golf swing because that is right before you trigger your golf swing. But I feel like that is one of the most common points that people actually have no idea what they're thinking about. So when you go play next, think about what you're thinking about right before or right when you enter and go over to hit the ball. So I think a lot of people underestimate how important that few seconds before you hit the ball is. A lot of people, you know, they think, oh, I just should not think about anything. I should hit it faster. I should hit it as soon as I get to the ball because the more I think, the more I'm scared to hit. If that is something that works for you, sure. But that might not work for everyone. Some people need to think about the target. Some people need to think about what they, you know, are aiming for or some people need a swing thought. So it really changes for every single person. But you know, sometimes you see people go up to the ball and they're still talking before they hit. Or you can tell when they're still thinking over the ball. And that is really the big difference between you hitting a good shot and you hitting a bad shot. Right here, I've got about 170, probably about 180 if I were to hit it down the left side to carry the water hazard. And there's a bunker out there about 240. So I can hit whatever club I want to hit, but for here, I really need to think about what I want to hit into this green. For this green, I think I want to get it as close as possible. However, I want to make sure that I don't hit it into the, th the bunker. So the three wood has a chance of going into the bunker. So I'm gonna go with my five wood. So once I've decided what club I want to hit, there is no going back. Like you need to be 100% sure. If you are not 100% sure what club you want to hit and you're still thinking about it over your shot, Maybe you don't have the right club and maybe it's time to go back to your back and think about why you're doubting hitting this shot and what could be the difference that is going to help you decide whether you should hit another club. So I come up here, I know that I have a bit of a downhill lie, but I know that now I take all of that into account before I hit the shot. And this is why I usually like to go straight up to my ball take a stance and see exactly what kind of stance I'm going to have when I hit. I personally find that very important because then when you walk up to the ball, it's not a surprise. You know, sometimes, yes, you might be able to go behind the ball and see, okay, I'm on a downhill line. 
but that might not always be the case. So I personally find it very beneficial for me to just go straight up to the ball, kind of examine the lie that I'm going to have so that when I go up there to hit, it's not a surprise. That should be perfect. Now doing all this does not mean you're going to hit perfect shots all the time. But what it does mean is when you're over the ball, you are confident, you're not doubting yourself, chances are you are going to hit better shots. So I know that some of you guys might be saying like, oh Jen, but you're a professional golfer. That's why you have to think about all this kind of stuff. We're just out here to have fun. Yes, but I also don't believe that because there is a reason why you clicked on this video and also golf is a lot more fun when you're playing better. And don't forget, I'm not talking about focusing and thinking about all these things during your 4 or 5 hour round. I'm talking about a few seconds before you hit your shot. That is something that you can invest into your game. If I told you that you are going to, if you just focus an extra 2 seconds per shot and you're going to shoot 5 shots better, are you not going to do it? Now I hit 3 shots exactly the way that I planned it to. Not 100% perfect, but basically about as good as it can be without being 100% perfect. And I'm still about 15 feet from the pin. From the pin. You might be thinking, ah, oh, as a pro on a par 5, shouldn't you be giving yourself like a tap-in? Yeah, but not all the time. 15 feet from the pin is still a makeable putt. It's still a putt that I'm giving myself a birdie. I got, I hit the fairway, I hit the fairway on the second shot, and now I hit the green. It's not the shortest par 5, so lowering expectations in the sense that making sure that you know what you're expecting out of yourself. Don't just think par 5 equals tap-in birdie. Always remember, every single hole has its own challenges, but always try to make your birdie putt if you are given the chance. So let's see if we can make this putt. So, clearly like you can see, it doesn't take perfect shots. It just takes good planning, good execution. Take it one shot at a time and the score will take care of itself. So trust in the process. I hope you guys try this out. Let me know if it changes anything in your game, if you guys found this helpful or not. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See you guys.